Hey crafty friends, Emily with you today and I have the new Hearts of Flutter bundle from Katherine Pooler, the pretty stamps die cut and coordinating stencils with these awesome new brushes and if you're a Stamp Nation member you get this cute adorable heartthrob die for free right now so don't want to miss out on this. Today I'm going to be using a square, um, the uh, Tetrad uh, color scheme from the color wheel. So I have these four colors here that I've picked out for my heart, um, my flower and butterfly stencil. So first I'm going to start out with this die. And so this is a nice big size. It's perfect for a two-sized card, but I did want to show you something a little bit unique today. I'm just cutting out the center of those dies and then the rest of those, you can just go ahead and twist the wire and they'll come off nice and easy for you. So first I'm starting out with my Emily Moore Designs A2 paper pack and I'm just folding it in half. And I'm going to take the biggest, the largest die, just the heart cut out. And with the paper folded, we're going to cut along that edge where there's a little bit of an opening here. So I'll show you um, before I cut this, there's a little bit of an opening at the top. So what we're going to do is form a heart-shaped card. And I'm going to turn this into an easel card. I love doing these types of cards with larger dies. Um, it still ends up being a small type of card, but it is a showstopper. And it's also actually quite simple to do. So here's the base of my card. That looks great. And then I'm just going to fold a little bit here um, the bottom half in um, which will form my easel so I'll show you that later and for now I'm going to cut out another piece of my heart the main base part and then I'm going to cut out also the other little dies in case I want to use them in this card or maybe for another card so just running that through my die cutting machine and then here I have my misty this is my sticky mat I'm just peeling off the uh, protective covering I actually haven't used this sticky mat yet um, I used my other ones um, but this one I hadn't I wasn't using yet so it's brand new and I'm just putting all my paper down and then I'm putting my stamps down on top this is one of my favorite ways to do coordinating stamps and dies sometimes it is hard with the intricate dies to line up the stamps so sometimes it is easier to stamp it first and then die cut it but I sometimes like to just die cut it out first and then I find that I get a nice precision on those stamping so here I feel like I missed a couple of the marks here with the flowers, but it's okay. I think I would just do it the other way with the smaller bits, but with this large heart, it worked out quite well. So here I'm going to use some Versamark, and I really wanted to show you how to add shine to this if you don't have hot foil plates. If you don't have that machine, I don't have that. Um, so what I like to do is add some embossing powder. So I just grab my Versamark, I'm stamping that on, and then with the sticky mat, I like to roll that up a little bit so it doesn't curl my paper too much um, but it is going to get a little bit of a curl but that's okay it'll flatten out later so here I'm pouring my gold embossing powder on here it looks great usually I flick it but there isn't really much room to do that so that there's a benefit of possibly stamping this out first and then die cutting but I just felt like it it turned out so beautiful as far as the um, alignment of it so just putting my embossing powder away and then I'm going to apply this with my um, or set my heat tool to it and look at that look at how it transforms so this is just with embossing I feel like you can get the same if not a very very similar beautiful effect look at that gold shine with embossing that you can get with hot foiling so that's a nice little tip or trick if you don't have a hot foil machine and now we're going to start on with our stencils so this kit comes with four separate stencils um, so we're just going to kind of layer them on one at a time and I'm going to do um, use these awesome new little brushes so it comes with two sizes there's kind of a medium larger size and then the smaller teeny sizes which are perfect for these little itty bitty pieces I I love these brushes I think they work very nicely um, I, I really love these for detailed uh, images like this and it allows for um, I think per more precise blending and even more accurate blending um, and so here I'm coming in with a little bit of mandarin orange and then just putting that off to the side of my stencil so I don't get too much of the ink on there and just even just dabbing it right in that ink that I have on the stencil. I don't even need to go back into my ink pad, which is really great. 
Um, so those are looking really cool and you'll still be able to see that gold shine. So now I'm going in with a little bit of Tranquil. I decided to use a couple different shades of blues and purples to go with my square color scheme and uh, just going along and using those blending brushes. I really love those skinny ones. They're super nice and that comes, these blending brushes come in the Hearts of Flutter bundle. So it's kind of an all-in-one. It's really nice. You get all this stuff that I'm using here today in one easy bundle you know I love bundles and I'm using this beautiful lilac color on the butterfly so here is our first layer let's see how it looks nice so notice how I'm just doing this right directly on my misty I'm cleaning my stencil that's my new year's resolution is to clean my stencils and stamps <laughs> um, but I'm doing this directly on the misty I love stenciling on the Misty. You can just stick your stencil right on and it keeps the paper in place because it's that sticky. The only thing is um, when you peel the paper off, it, it does curl a little, but it's it's really not that big of a deal. You can flatten it out and I've done that before. Um, so here I'm just going in with different colors. What's nice about the stencil is that um, I'm just kind of seeing the top, the next layer, see what other colors I might want to put next to each other. The spacing between each flower is nice because I can do, like I'm going to do orange here and on this left one here, I'm kind of adding it with my tranquil, my blue that I did and I'm only really stenciling on the top part of that. But then over here, I wanted to add a little bit of blue on the right side. So because that the flowers and everything are spaced so far apart and you have these really nice thin brushes, you can pick and choose what colors you want. You don't have to use like one color for the whole layer of the stencil, which some layered stencils are like that and um, are like that for a good reason, right? But for this one, it kind of allows you a little bit more creativity as far as being able to pick even more colors and more options. So here I'm just going in with a little more yellow, a lighter yellow on top of the dark yellow that I've already ink blended. Look at that. That layer looks really nice. So here... We're going to get a little bit more detail on that butterfly, which I love. So just trying to place this, you know, my heart isn't exactly straight on my, <laughs> on my Misty here. So um, it's not, it's going to be, it looks crooked, but it's not crooked. So um, I'm just cleaning my brush off a little bit. I use this one on lilac, so I'm going to use a little bit of pixie dust to get that darker shading on my butterfly. Um, there's nothing I love more than a little bit of detail. I really like that and I'm gonna do the same thing over here with my little lilac flowers. I'm just going to ink blend around the outside. I'm trying not to go over my lilac, my lilac that I already ink blended um, just to add that dimension. So that looks really good and then I'm gonna do a lighter, the Tranquil again here. Um, over that the on the light color so the lighter color um, on top and I think that's the best way to use the stencils do your darker colors first or I don't know because the butterfly look how pretty that looks with the darker color on top of it so you could do all your light colors first and then darker on top that would be very beautiful so here is our last our final stencil and just lining that up and then these flowers I really liked. I decided to use yellow on them. I just liked, I don't know, they reminded me of daisies. I know daisies are white, but I really wanted that pop of yellow a little bit more. And I'm actually just ignoring those um, orange bits because I felt like those are already nice and dark and I didn't really know if I could get it any darker. So here I'm going through with some pixie dust for the detail of my butterfly. It's kind of nice. You can use these brushes as little like paint brushes almost. And with Catherine Puller inks, they're so inky. <gasps> and look at that. It works really well. So look at that reveal, that final reveal. This looks so good, you guys. So I'm just kind of going to peel it off my sticky mat. Here we go. Wow. And look at that shine from the embossing powder. I mean, come on. So now I'm just bending it back to make it straight and you get all these really beautiful details. You can see the shine through the ink. And so now I'm going to stamp my sentiment for my heart card here. And um, this is just a scrap piece of paper. I haven't trimmed it down yet. So I'm going to use a little bit of on the lake because I really liked that blue and I don't feel like I used enough of it on my <laughs> on the front part, which is fine. But I just wanted to showcase a little bit more blue. So now I'm just trimming this down with my Fiskars. I just did a full process video on how to use your Fiskars trimmer and you can get really nice um, detailed cuts, like really tiny like that, which I love. So now I'm going through with 
my mini blending brush that I used on my blues and I'm using a little bit of Tranquil so I'm hitting that background so it's not just a stark white and this looks really nice and uh, moody almost so I'm really loving this so here is my easel part I'm gonna glue this bottom half onto the bottom here and that's nice and flat now it's and so i'm going to have some adhesive here from scrapbook adhesives by 3l i'm going to just put that just on the bottom half of my fold so you want to make sure you do that so that it can sit up but then i realized now that i have my sentiment i was going to put it on the inside here but it's not it wasn't i need to fold this in half i was trying to not fold it in half all the way but in order to get the easel to not sit up too uh, straight here I'm just folding it in half and then putting a little more glue on and there we go now we have our perfect easel and then we can put our sentiment down on the inside and that will stay with the sentiment so here I'm putting a little bit of foam tape you just have to apply a little bit of foam to your sentiment on the inside of your easel card and then it can sit like that there we go so that's how you do that I just wanted to show you that little mistake I made um, so that you could just see why we do it we always fold the top half in half um, I tried to do it the other way but that didn't work but you could write a little sentiment there but that's how you apply some shine and make an easel card with embossing powder thanks for watching